we're going to go ahead and kick things off here. Welcome everybody to this session on cultivating confidence. I am here with Shay Keats, who is a dear friend, a fellow creative, a coach, just an all around powerhouse and a really big advocate for supporting women and for supporting anyone really who's looking to develop a better sense of bringing their full self to their business. I've got a barky puppy in the background, so I may mute myself sometimes. She's very excited to be here too. Um, but Shay, will you give us a little bit of background on yourself and on your work? And while you're doing that, if you're joining in, go ahead and join in in the chat room and let us know where you're chiming in from today because we would love to hear from folks. Well, I'm Shay. I'm a leadership educator and strategic business coach. I am based in Portland, Oregon. That is my puppy, Benson, uh, named after Detective Olivia Benson, of course, in the photo with me. Um, I, I love, love what I do. I'm so excited to be able to share with you all today. Um, I'm also proud to be a founder and advisor at Breakaway Bookkeeping and Advising, which is how I uh, met, met Madeline through through that network. Um, and Breakaway is an innov innovative bookkeeping firm that utilizes technology um, and branding and offshore services to serve their small business advisory clients. That's phenomenal. So we've got a few people who chimed in. Feel free again if, if you're just hopping into the webinar to sh share in the chat where you're logging on from today. We've got folks from as far away as Austin, Texas, some folks in Boise. We've got um, Salt Lake City. So we've got, oh, oh, we've got a fellow breakaway advisor on, on the call. So we've got your team here too. So awesome. All right. Well, th thank you everybody for joining. And Shay, I'm going to just give you the keys to the kingdom. So take us away. Awesome. Madeline, quick question. Can I, how can I see, can I see the comments? Um, so if you're in Zoom, if you click on the chat panel, and then I'll also just keep an eye on them for you. Okay. So if there's one that, and that's actually a great call out. So two things that we want to remind people before we dive into the rest of the content today. Item number one is please remember, even though that we're doing this virtually, you know, this is something that Shane normally teaches as a workshop. So we are big fans of as questions come up, put them in the chat so that we can address them and answer them. And then the other thing we want to remind you to do is if you haven't already, grab a pen and paper because Shay's got some really, really good exercises here that we're gonna like pause for a few minutes so that you can do some free writing and think about some of the questions she's gonna ask. So if you don't have that on hand, just go grab that really quick so that, you, that you've got those when we get to those sessions. sessions. Awesome. Okay, so we're here to talk about self-confidence and it's such an interesting topic because I feel like so many women almost feel a little ashamed to admit that they're not super confident all the time, but it's so important. And we're going to talk today about um, what you can do to immediately increase your confidence, um, talk about the science behind that and why confidence isn't just some innate trait that either you have it or you don't. And then again, work through these different um, exercises that you can implement today uh, and every day to continue to build confidence. So I begin this workshop with a survey I did with a client of mine. Um, they are a multinational startup. Um, I talked with women from everyone from the beginning of the careers to middle management and higher and people in every department. So from finance to HR to marketing, to get some of these these statistics I'm going to share with you. So I'll go through this and then if you, when I finish, um, if you want to share in the chat uh, kind of how some of these resonated with you and how they made you feel. So 75% of the women that I surveyed feel confident around family and friends, which is pretty good, but I also think a little bit low, right? You know, I wish that number was closer to 100%. 0% feel confident at the workplace. 37.5% feel proud of their work, but anxious to share. 50% feel self-conscious about their bodies, even in professional settings. So I love if everyone could just share in the chat really quickly if this kind of gave you any kind of visceral reaction because I know when I did this it, it it definitely gave me some feels it gave me some feels I mean I I think about uh 
the amount of time and energy that, that women spend thinking about their bodies on any given day. Um, Angela chimed in, she said, 0% seems very low and surprising in terms of people feeling confident in their workplace. And, yeah. and Barbara said too, stunned that it's 0% in the workplace, you know. They didn't have a ton of options on the survey, but no one felt confident enough to say they felt confident, right? Wow. It's only wow. given I feel confident or not confident. Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh, any, let's see, somebody else said, my body challenges do definitely affect my confidence. Yeah, I agree with that. I definitely put a lot of thought into what I wear and I notice how that, that changes the way that I feel on the work I'm doing, even on Zoom. Like even on Zoom, we, we had a joke with our team recently that we each need a little lineup with pretty earrings and lipstick <laughs> so that just when you're on the screen, you're like ready to go. Yeah. Somebody else said, it's, it, it's not just me, feelings of inadequacy, but also knowing that these numbers are out there makes me feel a little bit better. Um, solidarity is really helpful. Oh, Twyla said, I bet this would look a lot different if it wasn't completed by only women. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. They did open this survey up to anyone, but I think it was maybe one man took it and the rest were, were women or people who identified as women. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Maybe. So we're, let's talk about why self-confidence matters. There is a direct correlation between self-confidence and success. So confidence is not based on your actual ability, but based on your belief in your ability. And there was a wonderful uh, study that came out of the Ohio State University where students were um, asked to consider applying for a fictional master's program. And the ones who were told you'll definitely get in, it's a piece of cake, no worries, they immediately applied. Those who were not given that feedback were just said, here's the master's program, apply if you're interested, um, did not apply because they did not think they would succeed. So I think that that's really, really fascinating. Going off of that, it's, it's important to remember that what your mentors say matters. And I know we have people on this call, some who are uh, working for larger companies, some who are independently employed, some who are in a hybrid model like breakaway, but we all have mentors and we all have people who look up to, have, look up to us and whom we mentor. So it's really important um, to think about the ways that we are giving feedback to others because that can immediately affect their confidence, which is going to make them believe that they can't succeed. And then we get stuck in kind of this downward spiral and nobody, nobody benefits. Um, and one young woman said to me once, it's easier to believe the bad stuff. And I thought that was just so, so powerful and, and so sad, right? You know, no matter how much good feedback that we get, it's, it's always easier to believe when somebody gives you negative feedback. So um, again, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, I don't think we need to treat everyone like they're a special little snowflake, but being mindful in our feedback is, is really important. Last but not least, when we're talking about why self-confidence matters, I like to highlight what I call the phenomenon of failing up and succeeding down. Um, we always see people who are like, how in the world have they gotten ahead of me in my career? Because they're you know, maybe you think they're a little bit of a doof or they don't seem to have the same skill set as you. But I can guarantee you, if you look back at those experiences, those people are always unfailingly confident and they know how to project that confidence. So I call that, you know, failing up. When you see people who doesn't matter what they do, they keep moving forward. And then unfortunately, I see with a lot of women, the phenomenon of succeeding down. So for whatever reason, maybe you have to take time away from the workforce, you don't feel as confident. So even though you're checking all the boxes, you're doing all the things, you're very good at what you do, you aren't as successful as people who are coming to it with confidence and you're, it's gonna be a little slower uh, for you. And we don't want either of those things to happen. We don't want people failing up and we don't want people succeeding down. We want everybody coming in on that level playing field and self-confidence really um, plays into creating that level playing field. I, I'm really glad you brought that up, Shay, because I, I think that that succeeding down, I see that a lot, especially when a woman 
who was quite successful in a corporate environment steps out on her own to start her own company. And suddenly she, because she's new at, at running a business and I experienced this myself, you know, I'd run other people's companies, but I hadn't run my own company. Mm -hmm. And so it took a really big hit to my confidence. And I see this affect everything downstream from somebody's abilities to get the clients they want. You know, they just start saying yes to whoever comes their way to mm -hmm. even their ability to charge what they're actually worth. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've had clients that I've coached where it's like, they had no problem stating those bigger prices when they were working under somebody else's umbrella. But the second it was just them, they started kind of questioning their ability or their, their value because they felt like it was something they were new at as an entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. And I think so often, not to go on too much of a tangent, but when we're working on our resumes and our LinkedIn and our skill sets, we think, oh, I don't want to talk about that thing. That thing wasn't important. That thing doesn't count. Well, it does count. So make sure that you're including all of those in your, um, you know, in your physical documents that you're creating. So when I'm talking to a group of women, I always want to address the confidence gap. So men consistently overestimate their ability and performance while women chronically underestimate it. You may have heard of the study that was done at Hewlett Packard that revealed that men will apply for open positions if they meet at least 60% of the requirements. Women only apply when they meet 100%. This blows my mind, but I can, I would not be surprised if every single person on this call has done this at some point in their job search said, well, you know, I have nine out of the 10, but I'm not going to apply because somebody's going to have 10 out of 10. So men will be applying for these jobs if they have six out of 10. You know, I, I mean, who is going to get ahead then? Why is there a wage gap? It's because we are not coming with this confidence. Um, Another important thing to note about the confidence gap is that if you um, are a woman, um, your confidence may be affected by your hormones. And I, I want to point this out because this is not a weakness and men are affected by their hormonal cycles as well. So I actually encourage both men and women to chart how they feel over the course of a month. But um, for women, it's something that's well documented. There's a lot of great resources about this. And if you know that at certain times of the month, you are feeling more confident, this is when you can give that big pitch, right? You can use it to your advantage. And that knowledge equals power. Um, there is a writer, Kate Northrup, who has a book called Do Less. If you have read that, I don't love everything that she does, but she talks really uh, interestingly about this phenomena and her mom as well writes about it quite a bit. So something to check out. Uh, again, not to be driven by it, but to just be aware of it. So, okay, so luckily we have some really great news and that is that confidence can be learned and cultivated. And this is again science. So science says that our brains are neurally plastic, which means we can actually rewire our thinking patterns and our neural patterns to become more confident. Um, and part of this process is called the upward revision of possible selves. And this came out of a paper done at Northwestern University. So basically what this says is if you can imagine it, you can achieve it. Um, so this is why visualization, uh, manifestation exercises, they seem woo-woo, but they can actually be really important. And again, there's science behind those. And I will say right now, for those of you who don't know me, I am the least woo-woo person you're ever going to meet. So if I am here saying like, do visualization, do manifestation, um, it's because, you know, right, it's, it's proven. Uh, so you have to revise these visions as your life and circumstances grow and change, right? Because otherwise, as I wanted when I was 12, I would be a marine biologist living in Barbie's dream house, but that's not true. So make sure that you're constantly, again, revising where you want to go. Uh, again, going back to our mentors and our peers and our colleagues, we can really help others build confidence. So continue to think about how are we interacting with others um, on a day-to-day -day basis and how can we continue to build up their confidence because again the more confident everyone is the more primed we are for success and I just want to call out here this 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 revision piece I think is so important that you're mentioning Jay mm -hmm. because 
I've seen a lot of people have goals and life and circumstances be completely disrupted by COVID. And so whether it was your revenue goals for this year, whether it was, you know, you thought you were just going to be crushing it full time in the business and suddenly you're like me where you're having to juggle, you know, pretending to be a homeschool teacher um, and all those other things, Amen. you know, you, you've got to do that revision, right? And so, um, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest ways that I noticed that my confidence is, is failing me is when my reality is completely out of alignment with that vision. And so taking a step back and saying like, wait, you know, things have changed, life has changed. What, what works for us now? What is the goal now? Um, and then setting intention ab about that is, is really, really important. I think particularly in this moment where so much in our lives are, are being revised. And, and um, I think we're just all kind of doing a, a priority check. And I also wanted to share that we had a, somebody come up, comment and she said, I've become a big fan of the woo woo too. <laughs> yeah. So I love that comment. I love that. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So now right here's what we're all here for is how can we cultivate confidence? How can we take advantage of the neuroplasticity of our brains and become more confident? And how can that lead to success? So my first quick hot tip is act like you live there. This used to say fake it till you make it, but I was told that that was not a nice thing to say. But I look at this because if you want a guaranteed ROI with low risk, the number one thing you can do is back yourself, right? Act like you already have the skills, et cetera, to do whatever it is that you want to do. And I think if you think about this, and I know I've got mostly financial professionals on here. How many times do we invest in a company or invest in a stock, but we don't really know, right? This is all an educated guess. These are high risk activities. So, but why don't we put that same investment into ourselves? So by showing up, um, making that investment before you feel ready, you're gonna feel more confident, um, again, in, in your day-to-day -day life. So again, these are two, um, comments that I've gotten from uh, previous conference attendees, and I want to read them, and then we're going to talk about how I would address both of these questions. So the first is, there are times when I want to share a concern about growth opportunities or hindrances with my manager, but then I back out at the last minute. How do I push myself to speak up? I often have to push back on people in higher positions than I am in. How do you feel confident presenting opposing ideas to higher ups? And I think this also comes up, I know we have a lot of independent um, business owners on this call. This just replace higher ups with clients, right? It's the same, it's the same conversation. So this is my personal mantra I'm about to show with you, share with you. It's also from a Disney movie. So if you know which one, feel free to drop it in the chat. But it is have courage and be kind. So First of all, in order to get out there and say the things that you are nervous to say, you have to tap into your courage and just do it. And how can you tap into that courage? You tap into that courage by being mindful and being kind in the way that you present this feedback or present something that you are nervous to say. Because if you are presenting kindness, you know, so often as women, we're taught that we have to have a hard edge, right, to be taken seriously. I find that that's not true. And when we come with that hard edge, what do we get reflected back to us? Hardness and coldness, and then our confidence is shaken. But if you come with a kindness and a warmth to your boss or your client or a colleague you have to give feedback to, they're going to reflect kindness and warmth back at you. And again, we're back in that cycle of building people up as opposed to building people down. And the movie was the live action Cinderella from, I don't know, what, 2015? I love that. I love that. Um, okay, so moving forward, we're going to do talk about goal setting and then do a quick rapid fire goal setting exercise. So by setting small achievable goals on the way to big ones, you create a series of small wins that build confidence for when you really need it for that big goal. Um, and so often people just say, okay, my goal is to make partner. My goal is to open my own business. But they're not thinking about all the little stepping stones that get you there. So instead of using your stepping stones, you're making a blind leap. 
you're probably not going to be successful if you make a blind leap and you're not going to feel comfortable and confident to make that leap. So we want to think about setting goals at every stage, small ones, medium sized ones, and big ones. So I have this quote from um, true life goddess uh, Michelle Obama here that um, I want to share with you all before we do the exercise. So Michelle says, find your space, find your spot, wear what you love. Choose the careers that may have meaning to you because there's always somebody who will say, I wouldn't have worn that color or why didn't you work at that job? But if you're comfortable in the choice and it resonates with you, then all that other stuff, it's just conversation. People have the right to have conversations. But I think it's the one thing we as women sometimes do. We don't make choices that have meaning to us. And then when those things fall apart, you have to have yourself to fall back on. Um, and again, I find this so powerful because so often we make choices because we feel like we should be doing them. This is what someone with my education should do. This is what someone with two kids should do. This is what I should do because I've been given this opportunity. And um, as a, my business coach said to me once, you know, stop shooting all over yourself uh, because it, it doesn't help you reach your goals and it certainly doesn't help the world. So we're going to take five minutes now and I would love for everyone, again, please come back to this later. I'll share the slides with you guys if you want to um, spend some more time on these. But I would love you to be specific and think big and jot down one uh, short-term goal. So this will have definitive action steps that you can immediately uh, implement. A five-year goal, so this is your midterm goal, um, and the short-term goal is probably going to be a stepping stone to the midterm goal. And then what is that big, giant, 10-year uh, long-term goal? And this is where, you know, I want you to go big and dream wildly. But again, your, your five-year goal will probably be a, a stepping stone to, to that goal. So I'm going to start the clock. And uh, when you have it, feel free to share it in the chat if you're interested. That's an opportunity to be brave yes. <laughs> and will be kind. Yes. So, so yeah, awesome. Okay, let's get to work. Good job. Yes, Madeline, I love that. All right, you guys, if you've got your one year down, feel free to share it in the chat. I just threw mine in there.
Do we want to give folks like maybe 60 more seconds? That sounds good. Okay, so Nicole says her one year goal is $200,000 in revenue. I love awesome. it. And I have to say, I really am proud of you guys for not hesitating from putting financial goals up there because so often as women, we like, eh, we can't talk about money. But I mean, also, I'm wearing my shirt today. I wanted them to see. Yes, yes. <laughs> Cut my own paychecks. Yes, yes you do. <laughs> awesome. Okay, guys, about 30 more seconds here. Feel free. If you're feeling bold and brave, throw that all in the chat. I feel like there's something really powerful, uh, you know, obviously, like, you know, not everybody's on, on um, audio to be able to speak that goal out loud, but I think there's something really important to, to speak it to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, got another million in here. Yes. Awesome. Does anybody have um, a 10 year goal that they'll share, like something really big and crazy? Mm. I mean, these are pretty awesome goals for one year too, I have to say. But. <laughs> I'll share mine while we're, while we're waiting for yeah. people to chime in. I've got a, a long term goal. Um, my grandmother lives in Tennessee, and I've always wanted to have a home there. And um, I also always wanted to have a home in Hawaii. So my 10-year goal is, is to just like rotate between here, Tennessee, and Hawaii. That would be my 10-year goal. I love it. I love it. All right. Awesome, everybody. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's see. Yeah, Michelle. Oh, Twyla, 10-year debt and mortgage free. And Michelle also wants her uh, beach condo and NYC apartment. I love it. Yes, girls. This is Awesome. So um, again, keep working on this. I know these goal setting exercises um, really deserve a lot more time, but I wanted, I want you all to consider this as a kickoff um, and hopefully you'll spend some more time and feel free. I'll give my email at the end. Like, please share with me. Like, I would love, love to know what your takeaways are and, and what you, your final conclusions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're getting into the woo-woo a little bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about visualization. Again, this was not my jam when it was first introduced to me. I was like, this is really dumb. And then I started doing it in a couple different scenarios, and I found that it really works, and it's really helpful. So when you do a visualization exercise, you want to, first of all, be super detailed, do it daily, write it down. And all of these things become a self-fulfilling prophecy and a mental rehearsal. So the first time I gave this particular workshop, I was so freaking nervous, but I spent time, okay, what is it going to look like? What am I going to wear? What room am I going to walk in? Are the people going to be smiling at me? Are they going to be scowling at me? Are they going to always be asking a ton of questions? Is it going to be, how am I going to feel? Um, how's it going to smell? What am I going to eat beforehand? So all of these things create a quiet but unshakable belief in your ability to succeed because in your mind, you've already succeeded. So next time you have something that you're a little bit nervous about, I would encourage you to do a really specific visualization exercise and see how that helps you in the moment. And again, this can be done, we do this right after goal setting because you can do a visualization exercise for each one of your goals as well. So my second woo-woo is daily affirmations because at the end of the day, we have our colleagues, we have our peers, we have our squad, but you are your own best cheerleader. And I encourage everyone to either develop your own or find one that works for you. Again, say it daily, write it down, and evaluate regularly because your affirmation should change as things are changing in your life. So we're gonna work here in a second on developing our own affirmations, but I want to share two of my favorite resources for affirmations, um, particularly for my financial peeps. Um, abundant affirmations are really awesome, really beautifully designed. Um, and you know, this one for an example is, I believe in myself and my ability to succeed. Affirmators by Susie Barrett are just these adorable, sweet little cartoons. They're also very funny. And I will completely admit I have every single deck and her tarot deck because I'm a crazy person. But um, again, a great example. I liberate myself from the endless treadmill of procrastination and start taking action. 
Um, also, I see Gina's goals, 750K in revenue, debt-free, five-year nonprofit in Tanzania teaching women bookkeeping fully functioning. That is awesome. Yeah, so cool. Okay, so moving on to creating our own affirmations. And we're, again, this will be rapid fire. I encourage you to come back to it but we're gonna have take two minutes to do it now. So first of all, it'll start with the words I am, or I have, I love, I know, etc. Use the present active tense and state it in the positive. You never wanna say I'm not. You wanna affirm what it is that you want. Uh, keep it brief, specific, and dynamic. And again, remember affirmations are only for you. You can't control others through them, and it shouldn't be what you think others want for you. It needs to be, uh, for yourself and by yourself. So again, I'll give you two minutes and then pop your affirmation uh, for the day or the week in the chat. Darla, I'll pop back to that other page so you can see some examples. So I believe in myself. Um, you could do something like I am successful. I am rich. I have more than enough uh, to be happy, uh, things along those lines. No problem. Okay, about one more minute. Okay, I love this from Barbara. I promise that I will be the best I possibly, I can possibly be. So empowerful. So Madeline, I am deserving of love and support. Yes. I think I need to take that for mine too. I love that. I think anybody who's like an acts of service kind of person, that's like, cause we're so busy like loving and supporting everybody else that we're like, oh, you know, I'll get there when I get there. But I have to remind myself of that one on the regular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Nicole's. I'm a unique expression of the universe and I'm excited to share my light with those around me. Yeah. That's, that's so beautiful. Cool. Oh yeah, Nicole, I missed you. That's so good. All right. So anybody else want to pop it in there? No pressure. I always feel like I do pressure people, but I don't really care. I think. Sorry guys. I, I think one of the most important ones here is to put them where you can see them, right? Like, so mine, you know, I, I did an affirmation process at the start of the year. And it was like kind of one part affirmation, one part intention. I don't, I don't like New Year's resolutions because I just think like they go out of the window in February. But like, I have one on my, you know, I had some really clear fitness goals this year. So I have one on my, my mirror that says, you know, I am rediscovering my inner athlete. And, you know, and I see it every morning on my mirror and it, it reminds me. Um, oh, Nicole scatters in her bathroom too. <laughs> awesome. So good. Yeah, the bathroom is a great place to do it. Like, cause right, you're always looking at in that, in that mirror and um, you can't avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also next, I sometimes put post-its around my computer, my workspace. That's really helpful as well. Yes, yes. And you've got all these beautiful ones in the background too. Oh, they're, they're not quite like full affirmations, but they're, I think, words of positivity. I just think surrounding yeah. yourself with these things makes a huge difference. I love it. I've got positive vibes only, create the things you wish, wish existed. And then my favorite is whatever makes you weird is probably your greatest asset. I like that one. All right. So I want to talk now about channeling your heroes. Uh, we won't take time to do this now, but this is another really great journaling exercise you can do. Um, as I said before, I just cannot get enough of Michelle Obama. I think she is truly an American treasure. Um, but think about whom do you admire? And remember, these people can be famous people. They can be people you know in your life. Um, they can be 
fictional characters. There are many different people you can admire and for different reasons. So take some time to write about, you know, who those people are and why. Then think about, you know, what are their stories and really dig deep, you know, read their biographies, um, follow their blogs, get on their Instagram, see what other people are saying about them and become immersed in that narrative. And then make a list of, you know, how can you emulate them? What parts of, what are they doing that resonates with you and how can you reson or how can you emulate that in your own life? Um, so something I added for this workshop, particularly today, because we're at such a difficult point in history and I feel like every time I turn on the news, I'm like, well, now I can't like that person anymore. So um, I just wanna make a statement that our heroes, um, are flawed, right? They are human beings or fictional characters. They're still human beings. Um, and, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you still can't take certain positive elements from their stories. And that's why I think it's really important uh, to dive into the larger narrative, right? What is their story? Don't just pick and choose without really digging deep there. Um, so I'll share with you guys, uh, besides Michelle Obama, who else I try to emulate at work, and that is Leslie No from Parks and Rec. Um, I adore her. I'm actually doing a Parks and Rec rewatch right now. But the reason I pick Leslie is because she is so passionate about her community and her work and her friends. And she always has a positive attitude, even when things are, you know, literally on fire around her. She is um, positive and she comes up with a solution and she always figures it out. So that's something um, that I try to emulate in my work and in my life. And yeah, it's great that I can put this little picture up near my desk to be, to be reminded of that. So again, putting up quotes and, or memes or whatever it is that inspires you about these people can be really helpful as well to keep, keep that top of mind. So does Leslie, anybody have a hero they can pop in the chat real quick? Leslie Nope is also like the best, best friend in the world. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah. just I don't, like she's so confident in herself, but she's just so, she helps other, you know, like, I mean, it goes back to this idea that you have of confidence, you know, is contagious and, mm -hmm. and that, you know, she helps uplift everyone around her too. And she's like always telling Anne, like, you're the most beautiful, amazing goddess who's capable of anything yeah. you ever, and I'm just like, I just need it. I have a Leslie Nope in my life. She's she's my creative director, Aljo, and she's yeah. always just like, you're a goddess. It's yeah. so good to have people like that around you. And right, it feels so much better to say to somebody that you're amazing than right, like, eh, you could do this better. Like, let's mm -hmm. put positivity out there. Uh, by the way, I'm going to call out, so Kaylin is my intern, and she's amazing, and she's on today, and she, her heroes are Brene Brown and obviously Michelle Obama. Mm. Mine, mine lately has been, um, I'm a big Brene Brown fan. I'm doing some, some Brene Brown reading. I've also been really into um, Jen Cicero lately. She's mm -hmm. got a book called You're a Badass and You're a Badass at Making Money. I just finished that book. And she just has so many affirmations and, and, and positivity and that whole scope of the story too, which I think was really refreshing in a book on money. And then my other one is Glennon Doyle. I was just, for anybody who's read Untamed recently, I just, I fell deeply in love with her work and who she is as a person. So, yeah. yeah. I just uh, downloaded the audiobook, so I'm excited to dive into that. Um, I will definitely reach back to you, Madeline, and we can maybe have a discussion. Well. Yes. Yes. All right. So, uh, moving on, but continue to put your heroes in the um, chat. I love when we can celebrate others. So I'm sure some of you have heard about the power pose. And the power pose was this confidence building technique. It was really popular, I would say, I would say in like sex in the city days, right? So like late 90s, early 2000s. And the idea of it was, is that if you, for X number of minutes a day, stand up really tall and put your hands on your hips and be ready to face the world, you will feel more confident and you will be able to have measurable success. So this, um, was actually debunked by scientists uh, who did some additional studies on it. However, I think there are some really important takeaways from you know, why, why people thought the power pose worked. So first of all, wear clothes that make you feel comfortable. You know, well, again, a lot of us are entrepreneurs or you know, we work from home. Okay, we're all working from home right now, right? But um, 
when we're in the office, particularly in financial services, we feel like we have to wear that stupid pantsuit. Now, like if pantsuits make you feel great, do it, you know, but if they don't make you feel great, don't wear it. Don't feel like you have to do your hair a certain way or wear heels or whatever. If you feel comfortable, you're going to be confident. You're going to be more successful. So, um, make sure that you think about that next time you go shopping. And there are amazing people out there, stylists who for less money than you think will help you figure out what, what those clothes are. Um, so secondly is a look people in the eyes. And this comes back to, again, that reflection, um, what you give, people will give back to you. And if you're looking away or not paying attention, people are not going to give you the attention that you deserve. Uh, and then you won't feel confident. So again, I understand that we are not handshaking with anybody right now, but when we do get back to having physical greetings, you know, practice, you know, make sure that you're approaching someone um, openly and excitedly and, and, you know, with a firm greeting. Um, I like to say greet everyone like you would your grandma's best friend. So what does this mean? It means that you're going to come to somebody with politeness, respect, but also warmth, right? You're not going to be cold when you meet your grandma's best friend. You're going to be open. You're going to be warm. And there's no reason you can't be like that with your boss or a client. Um, so next, don't be afraid to take up space. Again, as women, uh, we are told to make ourselves smaller in so many different ways, um, time and time again. Uh, and I want to just say, here's your permission to take up as much space as you need, you know, talk with your hands, be bold, be big, and, um, you know, just run, run with that. Um, and don't sit in the back of the room, sit in the front row. Uh, and last but not least, uh, use your voice. So millennial women in particular are constantly being chastised for speaking in a way that is called the glottal fry. If you're a little bit older millennial like me, um, you may have been chastised for using up speak, right? When your voice goes up at the end of a sentence, whatever, that's just the way that you talk. And don't let somebody particularly, um, and this is not me hating on men. I always want to be really careful in, when I give this talk, particularly to a group of women, um, but I've only ever received that feedback from a man. So, you know, if that's your voice, that's your voice um, and use it, embrace it and speak loudly with it. Would you, I, I just, I think too, we, I mean, we did a session earlier this year, but I think it's really important too, because obviously, um, you know, Zoom is so different, right? Like Zoom is so different than having a meeting with a client in person. And, and there's, there's just like little tiny different things we have to do to to engage um like a big one for me is like body language like am i sitting way back am i leaning forward but like are there any other things that you would say like what like the virtual power posing kind of in a way is there anything else you would add there yeah i mean i think it's just for me i get a lot of confidence by checking my space before i get on a call so mm -hmm. you know just making sure you know clearly here i'm in my office so i have it set up uh, but even right now, my something happened with my chair and I'm a little bit low, so I've got to fix it and, you know, make sure, again, I'm centered in the, in the screen. Um, I also recommend kind of checking your outfits before you get on Zoom, um, and that's just, I mean, you should really do this before any kind of meeting, and it's not because you should look a certain way, but if you get on there, you start the call and you're like, oh shit, sorry, can I, I don't know if I can swear, but like, I can see my bra through this, then you're going to feel really uncomfortable and not confident. And you're going to be worried about the fact that you can see your underwear or that you've got a funny shadow going on as opposed to focusing on what you're supposed to be doing. Um, also turn off self view. I mean, sometimes I feel better when I leave it on, but if you find yourself being distracted by it, um, just turn it off and then you can focus on what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I love that feedback. And I, I was talking to a friend, um, Misty Mejia, this past week, and she brought up that, that same concept of like, curate your space. Like I'm, you know, I'm at a, at, you know, a friend's apartment this week in the city. So I'm like, okay, what is beautiful that I can put in the background not for this webinar? Because I, before, you know, when I was just, uh, you know, just working, I had this like boring beige background, you know, and, and um, we've seen people do things too, like curating a virtual background that makes them feel, feel good. There are all these little things and 
And even if it doesn't really have an effect on the, on the client or on whoever you're conversating with, it can make a really big difference on how you feel up, you know, showing up in, in that space. Um, another little pro tip too, that, that was really helpful for me because I was, when COVID first started, I was transitioning to an office and then back to my home office. And so I was like in my guest room basically. And I was very conscious of background noise and I discovered an app just pro, pro tip, it's called CRISPR, it's spelled with a K, hmm. and it removes ambient audio. And so for me, it was really nice to just be, because I was just self-conscious of like, can they hear the background noise? So just little things like that really helped me grow my, my virtual conference, confidence. I love that. And I think too, Madeline, you make a good, or something that you said just stuck out to me for this entire workshop, everything that we're talking about today, why I love talking about confidence is it's about you. It's not mm -hmm. about anybody else. It's not about how other people are going to perceive you, although it certainly helps how other people perceive yeah. you. But this is a really wonderful form of internal work, and you have 1,000% control over it. So I, um, I really love that, um, and I, I hope everyone feels like they can, can make for, move forward and make those changes. So someone said to me, again, a uh, woman in a workshop, growing up as a woman is hard. And I was like, yes, it is hard. And I just loved that she felt confident enough to share that. Um, and I wanted to share that comment with all of you. So lifelong learning. So school doesn't end with your diploma. Um, you want to cultivate a growth mindset. And this means that you are trying new things and seeking out new experiences. Clearly, you guys are all here, so this is something that you are already doing. But this is important because failure then becomes part of your learning process because you're always trying new things. You're not going to be good at everything. But that means that when you have little failures, it's just part of the learning process and your confidence is no longer shaken by failure. So when you mess up or fail at something big, it's not going to derail you. It's not going to set you back. It's just a thing that happens. It also allows you to reward your efforts and not just the results. I, hearkening back to what we were talking about with um, the goal setting, right? You want to have all these little stepping stones along the way. You just don't want to make a big giant leap into darkness. Um, when you don't know what's on the other side. So you're rewarding your efforts, you're making these stepping stones along the way. And then again, another through line for this workshop is it allows you to be a teacher, right? As you gain more confidence and more knowledge you can share with others. And I think, again, it's super powerful to be able to do that and to give as much as you get. Um, so again, a uh, young woman said to me, I've always had a tendency to compare myself to others. And it's taken a long time for me to learn how this affects my self-confidence. I'm still working hard to find my own personal identity so that I can be confident in the person that I am at work, around friends, and in my relationship. For me, knowledge gives me power and makes me feel more self-assured. So I try to learn as much as I can about my environment, the people around me, and the work that I do. So um, knowing your values is really, really important. Um, I think we're going to not do this full exercise that I had because I know we're running a little tight on time, but I want to encourage everyone to come back um, and, and do this exercise because when you know your core values, whether you know it's an ethical dilemma or a big idea that comes up, you're not going to back down. Um, we talk about this for my breakaway advisors who are on the call. This is a huge, huge part of what we do at Breakaway. We are always talking about our core values. Um, it doesn't mean, and I, I always wanna talk about this, just because you know your core values and you're not gonna back down, it's not gonna make things less scary, right? When you have to really stick to your guns, but that's okay because now you're gonna have the confidence to, to see it through. Um, so again, I would encourage you to go through this core values exercise on your own time. Um, and there's just lists, you group them together, you pick the ones that um, apply to you. So for example, at Breakaway, our number one core value is bring joy. 
Um, you guys saw mine, it's have courage and be kind. Um, so if anybody else particularly are, I know I'm sure Madeline has some, I know she does because I've seen them. Um, I would love to hear if you already have figured out your core values, what are those? Um, if you can just put that in the chat. We have one that's called um, cite your sources. And this is, this is a, a big one for me because my background you know, is, is in research and academics, but you know, just kind of like Shay was doing earlier when she was talking about some of this data and then she was like, this is from this study or this is from this website. Like that is a big core value for me because particularly if you're in the space of being a digital content creator, there's a lot of people who steal from other people, unfortunately. And we've, we've had to do a lot of like trademark infringement stuff here and there, but it's a really important one for me too, in terms of recognizing that, you know, we're passing knowledge on, like we're, we're, you know, and we always want to give credit where credit's due if the work isn't our own and so that somebody can know that work and then explore it further, whether that's a book that we've read or a different presentation or a research paper. So that's a really big one inside our company. And we, it, it trickles throughout you know, like for example, social media, like if we're sharing a post that isn't our post, a lot of people do that, but yeah. we always make sure to credit the original content creator because it's not our work. Yeah. And it makes it right. So easy for you guys to do that. It's not a chore. It's not a hassle because it's a core value for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just knowing your values takes out so much of that mental back and forth because yes. you already know how to evaluate and make decisions. Yeah. Um, Michelle, said for her integrity inspiration empathy and fun are core values which i love that i love that i am um, i there's an exercise too if anyone ever wants to really challenge themselves there's this exercise you can print them off the internet they're called value cards mm -hmm. and i think in total it has about 70 different values and like the goal is to see if you can get down to 10 and then if you really want to challenge five and then distilling down to three, but it's a really good one because values, I, we call them business blinders. It's like for us, anytime there's a critical decision inside the business, we just hold it up against that set of core values. And there's so many times where we've kind of had a gut feeling of, um, mm, we're not sure this project is right, or we're not sure we want to partner with this person. And then we'll hold it up against the values and we're like, oh yeah, that's why, because it's out of alignment with our core values. Yeah. I love that, Madeline. Thank you so much. Um, for sharing that that uh, thought process. And you know, I'm gonna encourage, so Michelle, and then Nicole has shared as well, equity, acceptance, collaboration, harmony, and integrity. I wanna encourage everyone, if you have those, those value words, to go back and add the verb. And I wanna tell you, you know, at Breakaway, we spent probably an inappropriate amount of time figuring out, do we bring joy or do we choose joy? And there's a huge difference between those two um, similar values, but once you add the verb, so, you know, I would challenge, um, Michelle, for example, so are you, do you have fun? Do you bring fun? Do you promote fun? Um, do you relish fun? There are so many different ways that you can really hone those core values. And then as Madeline said, it will help you make all those decisions, um, that, that are difficult in your career or in your business. I can talk about core values like all day. So I, I, I have to throw one more in cause I can do it. And I love the way you teach and talk about them because same thing for me, they're not core values. If you can't put them into action and Shay, you and I have both worked with organizations where you go and there it's on the wall or the website, they're just sitting there, you know, and it looks pretty, but yeah. then you talk to staff and you hear about the company culture and, and you realize they're not being practiced because it was just seen as this initial brand exercise and they didn't define, you know, what does equity look like in action? What does it look like in more than just a word on the wall? And so I'm a big believer of associating the verb and figuring out what does it look like as an active thing inside of your company or inside your life. It's, I love that. I love that. I love it. So cool. Okay. So again, please come back to that. Okay. So as we kind of come towards the end, um, so rituals and lucky charms. So there was a study in the Harvard Business Review that talked about how carrying a lucky charm has been proven to help everything from cognitive recall to physical feats. Um, additionally, rituals uh, before a stressful event create calm. 
uh, and that increases confidence, right? If you're not feeling anxious and nervous before you start something. And a ritual does not have to be complicated. It can be taking three deep breaths, snapping your fingers twice, um, saying a prayer, you know, if that's your jam, whatever, whatever it is, it's just yours and it's personal to you. And it creates that moment of like, I'm stepping into my visualization in reality and let's go, you know? Um, so really powerful. Also, because a lucky charm or ritual is so personal, it is a great gift for someone that you mentor to either purchase them a lucky charm of some kind. I have a keychain that my uh, former boss and, and lifetime mentor gave me that I carry with me every day or share your personal ritual with someone else. I mean, how incredibly powerful is, and, and vulnerable is that to share with someone you mentor. So definitely something to think about. Um, if you have uh, a cool lucky charm or ritual and want to share it, please put it in the chat. So, okay. So find your squad. So you want to surround yourself with people who believe in you and why wouldn't you? Um, so when you, when someone you respect praises you, you're going to believe it. Now we live in a very loud world, right? We're, especially if we're running a business, we're online and people are talking to us and sometimes yelling at us all, all day long. So you really want to cultivate whoever that inner circle is of trusted friends, family members, colleagues, etc. Um, and remember that high praise begets high performance, which begets high and fulfilled expectations. So it's this wonderful upward cycle. Um, I tell you, we keep coming back to the same things <laughs> in this workshop. Um, but, but it's just a really beautiful place to be, again, to help both yourself and others. And I want to encourage everyone to celebrate your wins with these important people. Again, as women, we tend to downplay our accomplishments. Please don't do that with your inner, inner squad. Um, and I want to encourage everyone to pay it forward and say thank you to members of, um, you know, that inner circle. So I want to encourage everybody, again, if we were live, I just kind of, or in person, I stopped the workshop for 10 minutes and everybody uh, makes a list of those five people and texts them in the room. But I'm going to encourage you when you get off the call to text two or three people or email them or call them and just say, thank you for your support. Um, and remember to do that regularly. And again, it's this mirroring, it's the giving back um, and, and giving more to get back the things that you need to be confident. And then last but not least, in order to celebrate those wins, you need to keep an ongoing list of all your big and small wins. Again, some of these, these tips and tricks that I'm giving seem so simple, but they are extremely powerful because how often do we not celebrate or do we not even as women acknowledge our accomplishments? you know, until somebody else points them out to us. And I am so guilty of this, of just, you know, even today, you know, three years into business for myself, I think I'm doing okay, but there'll be days when I'm like, this is crap. I throw up my hands and then someone will I'll talk to me and they'll be like, how do you do that? That's so awesome. And to just be reminded of that, I'm like, how can I do that for myself? So I encourage everyone to keep a list of their wins um, and celebrate them and be really militant about this. Every single one, no exceptions. And you don't have to throw a rager every time you're celebrating, but you know, have that glass of wine, have the piece of chocolate, go for a special walk, um, snuggle your dog, dance with your kids, whatever it is that you do to celebrate, do it. Um, and you know, I could tell a lot of stories, like kind of cautionary tales of people who haven't done this. Um, but I think we all know them, so I won't, I won't go into that, but, um, I'd love if you feel open to, if you can share a big or a small win in the chat and how you've celebrated or recently celebrated that. And of course, even right now, as I'm saying this for myself, I'm like, can I think of any of my own wins? <laughs> so Madeline said, hiring my first full-time employee, yes. yeah. how do you celebrate? 
Um, well, I, I celebrated with my coach and then we went out to lunch. Me, me and the employee went out to lunch and that was that. And that was a big deal for me because I had missed that, that ritual, A, because of COVID. We, like, our restaurants weren't open. But B, it felt really good to be like, here we are. Like, we did this. So that was really awesome. Um, another thing I want to share, share here, too, is in addition to celebrating your wins for yourself, Anytime somebody gives you affirmation, like store those up too. Like I always love keeping a running of the positive words that other people have, have said about you or the wins that you've created in other people's lives too. Because on those days that Shay was talking about where you're like, it's all crap. You can go back and look at these things and you can be like, oh wait, it's not all crap. Okay. I recommend keeping, when people send you thank you notes, also sending yes. thank you notes is super powerful. I kept a whole bunch and forgotten about them and recently came across them and it made me feel just so, so good about, I'm like, oh yeah, I do make a difference. Like I have done things that are important. Um, and you know, again, just to underscore what Madeline said, to make sure that you keep those things and don't do what I did and put them in a box in the closet for 10 years, you know, keep them somewhere where you can see them, pin them up on the cork board. Um, and, and keep looking at them. Mm -hmm. So Nicole said she sold her house in COVID times and she had a glass of wine with a friend to celebrate. So congrats, Nicole. Woohoo. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> wow, awesome. Okay. Okay. So positive self-talk. So we're doing all of this work. There is so much to do. And yet so often we are engaging in negative self-talk, even when we are doing all of the things to uh, re rewire that neural plasticity. So um, I want to go over some phrases that you can embrace and some that you should ban. And this is advice from Karen Koenig, who is a psychotherapist um, who studies in using positive self-talk to um, with patients who need to overcome an eating disorder. So the phrases that are holding people back um, are unnecessarily self-deprecating, like, I'll never be able to do this, I'm not very good at this. I'm stupid, dumb, incompetent, a mess, overwhelmed, etc. This is too hard for me to do. Others will think this is terrible. Or what I really think it always comes down to, others will think I am terrible, that my value is not good. So again, super easy flip. And these are also things you can use as affirmations. So how about, I'm doing the best I can and my best will improve. I've accomplished a great deal already. I didn't do a perfect job, but I'm pleased with what I've done. I know I'm capable of doing this and really want to do a good job. Or again, my personal favorite, because it's such a Leslie Nope thing to say, I can figure this out. So I just, I just be aware and maybe even note down over the next couple of days where these negative phrases are popping into your own thoughts and then um, think about, again, how you can and flip those on their head. So I think that the biggest challenge for me is that I assume what other people think of me. I overthink something someone said or I compare myself to others. Um, raise your hand if you do this because I do this like every single day. Um, and it's something that I'm working on and great, this is a great type of thing you can work on in therapy, by the way, everybody. <laughs> I know, I do, um, but most people are not thinking negatively about you, and that's why for our final exercise, or the final exercise that I'll encourage you to do, is think about how others see you. Um, your mom, or your mentor, or your best friend, or your partner is not going to be thinking about like, oh, they're not very good at this, they're terrible, blah, blah, blah. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, they're so awesome and they're so confident and they do all of these different things and they're so successful. So if you're feeling down on yourself, imagine you're writing a letter of recommendation for you. Um, imagine you're one of these people that care about you and love you and constantly lift you up. Um, what would you say as that person writing a letter to yourself? Um, and spend some time, again, journal, journaling about this and, and keep it handy, reread it regularly. Um, and I think you'll be surprised at, at what comes up. And, and also it'll make you recognize how often you're engaging in those, uh, negative, um, those negative thoughts about yourself. So that's, 
kind of where I, I want to leave everybody, but I do want to open it up to, uh, I do questions and stories, not questions and answers. So mm. um, if anybody has a question that they uh, would like to ask or a story uh, they want to share, now is the time to do it before we wrap up. Mm. I, I, I want to, I'll, I'll ask one just to get the ball rolling and, and yeah. feel free to chime in y'all in, in the chat. My, my question for you is how do you see self-care and confidence going together? Because I have only gotten more aware of the fact that like when I'm having a di one of those days where everything feels like crap, if I like go down the list and you know, I'm like, oh, have I eaten? Have I drank water? <laughs> we notice there's a correlation there. So, so talk to me a little bit about how you feel like self-care and confidence play off of each other a little bit. I love that question, Madeline. Um, so in two different ways, and I think this goes back to when we were talking about, you know, where, what makes you feel comfortable. If you are not feeling comfortable physically, it's going to be really hard to be confident because you're going to be distracted by those feelings of, by those, those physical feelings, right? They're gonna pull you out of um, yourself um, and your, your mental workspace that you're in. So, you know, I think too, and many people who are much smarter than me have talked about this at length, but it's important to recognize what self-care truly is. And self-care is not, I mean, it can include things like getting a massage or getting your nails done or, you know, those kind of more superficial things, again, not that they don't have value, but truly what self-care is, is, you know, are you eating in a way that nourishes your body? Are you drinking enough water? Are you moving, right? Especially now, now that I'm in my little office and there's nowhere to go, I don't move enough during the day. So, you know, we have to be aware of these things and to be aware that there will be a huge payoff, but also sometimes self-care feels a little bit like work. You know, maybe you don't want to drink water. Maybe you don't want to, you know, eat that nourishing food or, you know, go for a walk or, um, you know, take time away from whatever you're working on to meditate or pet your dog or whatever. But all of those things um, will feed you and again, will allow you to just feel more comfortable, which allows you to focus on building confidence. I love that. I love that. Um, last call for questions here, but if anyone else wants to pop them in the chat, I have, I have another burning one for you, Shay, but okay. I'm going to just wait and see if anybody else chimes in with one. Um, and I also think it's a great moment to share, you know, stories. If, if you're somebody who's built self-confidence over time, or, you know, if there's a book or a resource that's really helped you and you want to pass that on, I mean, Shay had so much advice about the importance of passing passing these things on. So if you have anything like that, feel free to chime in in the chat. But my that tees up my last question for you, Shay. So what what would you say if there was like, I, it's hard to distill one, but maybe top three, if there's like books or resources where you would say, go read this, you know, or go check out this, you know, whether it's an audiobook or anything like that. So oh, I have a further reading and resources list. Look at this. <laughs> so, and this will be, you can, these will all be linked when you get the, the presentation. But um, the one book that I really enjoy is called The Competence Code, and it's by Caddy Kay and Claire Shipman. Uh, really helpful, um, just a lot of tips. Um, if you are looking to start um, a, an affirmation or a meditation practice, May Cause Miracles by Gabrielle Bernstein is kind of a a recent go-to for a lot of people. So I recommend that. Um, but uh, yeah, those are, those are kind of my, my favorites, but I think what I would encourage anyone to do first, right? We can get stuck so much in this um, cycle of just, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning, but we're not actually doing, right? And I, yes. I hear this come up so much right now as we're all doing our anti-racism work, et cetera. So when do you take, make the leap from reading and studying to doing? Um, and I think that comes up with anything that's new and that's hard. So yes, read the confidence code. Uh, Nicole recommends uh, feel the fear and do it anyway. I'm going to definitely check that out. Um, oh, another book that I love that's kind of a story of confidence is The Middle Finger Project by Ash Amberge. I don't have that on here, but it is phenomenal. Um, so yes, definitely read those books. But 
you know, we talked about a lot of really quick and tangible exercises uh, today that you can do. And I would encourage you to just start, pick one and do it and then see how um, that helps you. Because as much as you can learn, if you're not implementing, you're not going to have that rewiring. You're not going to take advantage of the neural uh, plasticity in your brain. Mm, I love that. I love that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that's all. Here's where you can find me if you want to chat more. Um, I would love to hear any feedback on um, the, the workshops today. And um, if you want to learn more about what I do in my coaching practice or what I do at Breakaway, uh, feel free to reach out. And then again, my link uh, for my coffee chat will be in the, in the, in the presentation. Yeah. So, well, thank, thank you. you. And yes. And we've had some, some wonderful thank yous and thank you, this is awesome. Thank you for the encouragement. So thank you so much, Shay, for being willing to come by and just share your wonderful expertise. Um, as Shay mentioned, I will be sharing the slides. We're also gonna share a recording. Please pass it on again. Like if there's somebody you know who's struggling with this or could benefit, we're also gonna throw in there, we've got a, a, a white paper we did called Bridging the Confidence Gap and it's got some practical exercises too. So we'll be handing those things out and um, thank you all for joining and thank you again, Shay, thank for the time. Thank you Madeline and thank you everyone for spending this hour with, with us. I really had a great time.